Good morning. Welcome back to JPC Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. Let's start out with our prayer in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's ask the Lord to shine our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind, that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn. So after having conquered civil desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking of doing all things that are pleasing to you. For you are Christ, your God, your light, and to you we get glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, in the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So our first reading this morning will come out of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Day 50, Pentecost. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. And the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multiple came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthenians, Medes, Alamites, those dwelling in Macedonia, Judea, Cappadocia, Cappadocia, Potus, Asia, Perwega, Pamia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya joining Crete, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Corinthians and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own language the wonderful works of God in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the day of Pentecost, also called the Feast of the Weeks, in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 16, comes 50 days after Passover and his celebration of the first fruits of the harvest. As Jesus was crucified at Passover, the events of chapter 2 occur, what, 50 days after his death. On the first Christian Pentecost, is the unity of assembling with one another, or purpose, right? And one place provides the environment in which the Holy Spirit what, comes to dwell in us all, right? Came to dwell in us. So we see in verse 3, it said, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them. So the Holy Spirit coming in the appearance of what divided tongues is fire is fulfilling the prophecy of John the Baptist that Christ would what baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. This fire is a manifestation of uncreated energy of God because God is wholly uncreated. His power and energy is also uncreated. Right? As we read in verses 4 through 8, right? How they could hear each other and their, and their language in which they were born, right? So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Let's look at that. It's a little bit different in my Bible, right? So Joel chapter 3. Verse 1, the promise of the Holy Spirit. After it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams. And your young man shall see visions. So here, so it's fulfilling Joel chapter 3 verse 1. And a divine reversal and recapulation of what the events from the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. There God confused the tongues, right? The Tower of Babel, right? He confused the tongues and they all spread out, right? To different areas. In the account of Babel, pride was shown to possess the awesome power to divide. Here, the humble reception of the Holy Spirit is shown to have the overwhelming power to what unite, even in diversity. A key lesson at Pentecost is that people hear the gospel and their own language. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Our next reading will come out of John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. I'm going to leave a little bit of some links and notes in the write-up because you can also compare this reading here in Acts to Revelation chapter 1, verse 4, which that will get you to talking about the seven spirits, right? God, and that would lead, lead you into other readings like 1 Enoch chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. 1 Enoch chapter 90, verses 21 through 22, the Testament Levi, chapter 8, verse 2, and Tobit, chapter 12, verse 15, which I do not have time to get into that right now, but I will leave the links so everybody can look at, look at that in my write-up, right? So we're moving on now. So we're going to move on to John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Jesus appears to ten disciples. In the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Christ's commission, so Christ is commissioning the disciples to what continue his mission on earth, right? Granting them the Holy Spirit, verse 22. The authority to forgive sins of others, verse 23. Through this direct consecration, it is through apostolic continuing, Christ's own priesthood is communicated to the bishops and priests of the church. Right? May the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So John chapter 7. be our closeout read. So John chapter 7 verses 37 through 52 in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Starting in verse 37. The promise of Pentecost. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me has his as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Reaction to Jesus' teaching. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, No man has ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, Are you also deceived? Have any of have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed in him. But this crowd does not know the law is a curse. Nicodemus, who he came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? They answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and look. Search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the last day, what the great day of the feast, was the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the ceremony of the drawing of water. 
Let's look at John chapter 7, verse 2. So the Feast of the Tabernacles, Hebrew, Sukkoth, if I said that right, is an eight-day autumn harvest festival commemorating the time when Israel wandered in the wilderness of Sinai and the people lived in tents or tabernacles. Along with Passover and Pentecost, this is one of the three most important festivals of, ancient, of the ancient Jews. It included numerous sacrifices and celebrations. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. In later times, the final day of this feast also included the drawing of water from the pool of Shalom to be mixed with the wine and poured at the foot of the altar, both as purification and the remembrance of the water flowing from the rock that Moses struck, Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. It further included the lighting of the great lamps and the outer core of the temple. So let's read verse 2. It said, Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. So this provides the context for the Lord's words. If anyone thirsts, what let him come to me and drink the living water. That was in verse 38, right? He who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Beautiful. So the living water is the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? And the new life that accompanies this gift. So the prophet in verse 40, right? So in verse 40, it said, There Therefore, many from the crowd, when they heard the saying, said, Truly, this is the prophet. The prophet refers to the expected Messiah, the Savior Moses foretold would come. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 19. So Bethlehem, right, they mentioned Bethlehem was a town from which the Christ was expected to come, right? The chief priests had sent officers of the temple to arrest Jesus in the middle of the feast. That was in verse 32, which we did not read. So in verse 32, it said, Then the Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers what to take him. By the time the last day had arrived, in verse 37, no arrest had been made because these officers had been converted by the, what the Lord's teaching. The Pharisees and the scribes who had witnessed the miracles and read the scriptures derived no benefit from either. The officers, on the other hand, even though they could claim none of his... of they could claim none of this learning were captivated by a single sermon. When the mind is open, there is no need for long speeches. Truth is like that. St. John Chrysostom in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then as we've seen in verses 15 and 52, it was talking about Nicodemus. So Nicodemus had spoken with Jesus in the middle of the night. That was in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. It was, that's a great read and a great conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. It had increased... So that conversation alone increased Nicodemus' faith, right, in Christ. Yet, his defense of Christ was still based on our, on our law and was not yet a public profession of faith. According to the law, Jesus must be given what a hearing before he could what be judged, right? That's what Nicodemus was saying. No prophet has arisen out of Galilee. The Pharisees show their blind hatred and their ignorance of the scriptures. For the prophet Jonah came from Galilee, from the town of Gath, Heifer, which was only three miles from Nazareth. That was in four kingdoms. Chapter 14, verse 25. The so four kingdoms, for me, is second kings, depend on your Bible. So let's go to four kingdoms. Chapter 14. There it is, verse 25, right there. He said he, he rescued 14, 25. He rescued the people from the territory of Israel, from the entrance of Hamath as far as the sea, and Abram, in accordance with the word. The Lord, the Lord God of Israel spoke through his servant Jonah, the son of Atmea, the prophet from Gath Happer. Right? So Gath Happer, right there. So he's from Galilee. So it's only, what, three miles from Nazareth. So that's where the prophet Jonah is from. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this is where we're going to end this morning. Like I said, I'm going to add some stuff into the description box. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to add 
the, what I was talking about with the Revelations chapter 1 and verse 4 and comparing that to what we read in Acts. And I'm going to add some of the other sources like 1 Enoch, right? Uh, chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. 1 Enoch 90, verses 21 through 22. This Testament Levi, chapter 8, verse 2. So we go back to Acts real quick because I'll read, I'll read from Tobit. So you'll at least have a little bit of understanding when I post these other links. So we go back to Acts, right? And let's read real quick. I'll read. Let's go to Acts, right? So we're talking about Pentecost, right? So let's read Revelations chapter 1, verse 4 real quick, right? And then I'll read from Tibet, and then I'll put the... All the other stuff in the in the description box. So in Revelation chapter four, it said, "John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from from him, who is and who was and who is to come, from the seven spirits who are before his throne." Right. So the number seven, of course, is fullness and completion. Right. The seven spirits of God most likely refers to the Holy Spirit and his several gifts, as his phrase is included in the blessings of the Father and the Son. Right, so let's look at Tobit. Okay, so I got that marked. So Tobit, chapter twelve, verse fifteen. It says, "I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels who report the prayer of the saints and who enter before the glory of the Holy One." So Raphael reveals himself to Tobit, Tobias, the one of the seven holy angels who appear before the glory, of the, the glory of the Holy One. Reference Revelation chapter one, verse four, which we did. These seven angels are also called archangels. The names of the four are then revealed, are revealed. Raphael, Gabriel, Daniel chapter 9, verse 21, Luke chapter 1, verses 19, and verses 26 to 38. Michael, Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, Jude 9, and Ur, and Euro, and Urel. And 2, Asterisk chapter 4, 2nd Asterisk chapter 4, verse 1. Okay. So I'm going to post the rest of that in the description box, right, with the Enoch and the Testament Levi. I even mentioned, I'll put the Revelation one in there too with some of the, 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 some of the work, the commentary and all that in there. So a little bit better understanding. We're going to close out in prayer. Thank you all again for following the reads. There will be not much of a write-up today, just, um, just going to put notes and links in there. I'm getting ready for church. I'll run it as premiere too, so I'll try to monitor it as I'm getting ready for church. So if anybody has any questions, it'll it'll be up. So I'll I'll, I'll be I'll be there, right? While I'm getting ready for church, if that makes sense. Without further ado, let's close out prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord God, you've spoken us your divine saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having a blameless life in contact without reproach in Christ the Lord, you are light, to you we get glory. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, is hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Lord is our shepherd. All right, we depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. All right, thank you all again for following. It means a lot. Please check out, like I said, the, uh, the my description box with the links and notes. Right? I am going to add that in there. Like I said, there won't be much of a write-up, just a bunch of notes and stuff, if that makes sense. All right? And I will be there a little bit for questions if anybody jumps on before at the church because I'll run it as premier. Right? So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be merciful to you. The Lord's end of his count upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. In the sages. Amen. Jerry Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day, good evening, good night, good afternoon, whenever and however these messages, readings find you all. Peace be with you all. Love you all. JPC, spiritual talk, never hold back, no excuses. Lay your treasures in heaven. Right? Seek him, develop a relationship with him. It's one of the things that I will teach the most is how to you teach you how to draw closer to God, to develop that relationship. It's important 
that you enter into a relationship with your Creator, right? It's good for spiritual healing, right? That's all I have. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love you all. I'm out.